this is a documentary on photography. First, I'd like to tell you a little about the history started, that started photography. In 1814, Jervis Neves developed the first camera obscura. This took the first photo. It wasn't ideal, and it took eight hours for the light to expose. This, helped, this, this meant that it took eight hours to take the picture. And even the picture faded with time. A few years later, in 1841, William Henry Tobolt developed the calotype process which made it possible to make multiple copies of the same picture and this was, this was a massive step in the photography world. Ten years later, in 1851, with the new Kaleidon process, cameras only needed a few seconds of light exposure to make the picture. In 1948, the Polaroid was created and this allowed people to take a photo and then develop it immediately, right from the camera. It only took an extra 15 years after that for the Polaroid to create the first coloured film, which meant no more grim black and white photograph photographs. And then one of the biggest breakthroughs of the photography world was the creation of the digital camera in 1974, where the Sasson company built the first digital camera, adding another 10 years to that Canon put out the first digital camera for the public, which was later improved by Pixar, thus making it affordable to savour your memories in, onto paper. Coming closer and closer to the days of today, in the 1900s, the camera phone technology was first used in Japan, but then quickly spread around the world. Now coming closer to 2015, in 2012, Kodiak put out cameras that didn't have to be connected to a computer in order to download and share the pictures. Due to new apps popping up, such as Instagram, which is possibly the biggest photography-based app out there today, and now having photography as a college course, the age of photography is at an all-time highest point, with the younger generation growing more accustomed to the subject, leaving it one of the most popular subjects in and out of college. So just from this short history description, you can see that the camera and photography itself has come a long way. And that's how it will continue doing, getting better and better over the years to where cameras will be the size of 10p coin and be able to zoom up to 1900 metres. Hi, my name's Peter Well, I'm a freelance photographer, um, working mostly in the music and the political industry. Photography was mostly um, a way out of uh, expression. As a young lad, seven year old, first SLR, 10 when I first started room. Uh, just always had a fascination of rec recording as much as being artistic. My career took off when I was around about 21. I started getting used in the local papers and then it escalated quite quickly to be used by PR companies and national and international magazines newspapers. I think they're fantastic and it encourages lots of people to take photos. Uh, when I started, very few people took pictures. It was on film and I... Um, I was probably the odd one out, you know, I was the only one who, who had a dark room and the only one who stayed up late in that. And, yeah, very strange to see it's such a public domain now. Most I can still do is with um, singer punk, <coughs> sorry, singer punk um, activist Billy Bragg, I'm his photographer, and I do Glastonbury Festival with him every year. Done lots and lots of political protests with him, as well as enjoying his influences on the music scene. Um, most unforgettable, probably Amy Winehouse. Uh, most famous, probably Tom Hanks. Um, but just so many people um, what you just come in contact with because of my camera. Um, never, I never, even today this morning, Eddie is out. It's just an honour, privilege, and, and I'm lucky to get to take pictures of these people. But before the dual cameras and the easy, efficient way of image printing, there was the dark room which is a room that is made completely dark which allows the passing of light sensitive to the photographic materials. This includes things as photographic film and photographic paper. Dark rooms have been created and used since the beginning of photography in the early 19th century. This machine here is called an enlarger. Basically you put your negative film in here and then you put your protective screen here and you focus it onto your photographic paper here. You've got the, the timer over here which helps us time how long the exposure is going to be on the photographic paper and then if you follow me over here you've got all your chemicals which, which make which produce the picture itself usually this room is completely black and that's really all, all it is about photography really and that was Step to the Dark Room now over to local music photographer Danny Webster for a few minutes. Danny Webster and then um... I'm a music photographer, I would say. Probably in graphics, uh, I did start doing uh, projects and we needed some photography doing, so I got handed a DSLR and just started shooting skateboarding, just to 
incorporate it. I, mean, I want to go further. I just want to shoot more bands, more people, whoever. Just take them on the road, tour, get me out there. I'm the strongest. I like doing portraits. Um, and I like doing music photography. Um, I do other stuff, like for the council. I do all their PR work, but um, mainly music photography. I want to get into that one. Um, there's a few people. There's more like lower end people, but probably Adam El Macias, um, music photographer for quite a few alternative bands. I like his style. Um, I spoke to him a couple of times. Yeah, enjoy that. That was Danny Webster. Here's some words from Leo Barron for you all. My name's Leo Barron and I'm a photographer, filmmaker from Grimsby, England. I realised I had an interest in photography in about 2010, the year before I left school. Um, I don't know, I just, I just really liked it and then that was pretty much when I started just shooting photos of my mates and just going on about and then just kind of took off from there in a way. So. Who helped me kickstart my career in photography would be a photographer called George Marshall. He used to work for Ride UK, a BMX magazine, then made his own magazine called The Arbion and he gave me a lot of opportunities and a lot of chances to go out and like, work in the field and like just do whatever I want and just help and then like have a benefit from it like stuff we get published in the magazine and, and just stuff like that and he was probably one of the main guys who helped me actually start and do stuff so George, shout out George. I'd say my strongest style of photography is BMX, um, that's pretty much what I do every day but then I like going out and just shooting photos in the street of people just doing whatever, just being people. I'd say the photographer that inspired me the most for my style would be um, he's actually done shoot BMX. He used to. He's called Inigo Taylor. He's from, actually from Grimsby, and he shoots documentary. And he's in the same photography. He's so good. He just walks around and just gets amazing photos, which I can't even see. You know, on film, like, if you, after twenty thousand pictures, and you'll start being good. And then twenty thousand pictures soon clock up with the digital age. But I don't think it's wrong in saying that. It's uh, take as many pictures as you could. Uh, I, my personal line was politics and the love of my family. Um, I did, that's all I ever took pictures of. What I have straight to is um, be integral about your life. So never rip anyone off, always be sure. The integrity of others is as important as your own, so treat them as you like to be treated. Um, just get out there, is it? There's nothing worse you can do. Um, I say the information I'd give to young people is just go out and take photos and make videos because that's probably the quickest and best way you're going to learn instead of like, also sit and watch videos, but like, to learn, just go out and do it, and then you'll learn a lot quicker in pretty much any way. That's how I did it, and then it kind of works. Again, you, you, you sort of become who you are. You know, it's, I just keep taking pictures of music, to keep getting involved in politics, it's dear to me, and um, that gets me to be the best in the game, or one of the best, and that's what I feel, and that's my reputation these days. It didn't come easy as just as passes and access to famous people doesn't come easy but it's because i've just stuck at it shoot 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 get out there there's nothing worse than sitting in your bedroom like oh i wish i did that oh, i want to do this so let's do it don't hate everyone because everyone suddenly has this thing where, where if someone posts something they're instantly like nah i don't like it because of this everyone's just jealous and i feel like you should just not hate everything that anyone does I have no beef with anyone unless you personally don't like and that's different but then if, you, if someone does something it's good Accept that it's good and just like don't hate everyone. It's so pointless hating people because it just don't even matter, it's just life in it. So just don't hate everyone. I say there's no point. Well, that's it, viewers. You've had the history and now, and now you've had the future. Now it's over to you and your camera.